Hey. hey everybody, it's Michael Gold. I'm the president and CEO of Gold Family Wealth, where we help people make smart, informed decisions about their financial situation so they're able to improve their life and achieve their financial goals. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic that's been coming up a lot. A lot of people have been asking, what's the difference between a financial advisor and a wealth manager? And it gets a little convoluted because at some point, people went from stockbroker to financial advisor. The term just sounded sexier. After decades of that, the term wealth manager sounds sexier than financial advisor. And so what we find in the marketplace is a lot of financial advisors are calling themselves wealth managers or wealth advisors, and it's really become a marketing thing. And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk you through the key differences of what a true financial advisor does and what a, and a true wealth manager does. Okay, so let me just pull this up here. So financial advisor versus wealth manager. Now, both of them, whether you're a financial advisor or a wealth manager, they're going to consult on investments. Okay, this is what we typically think of when you hear somebody say, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a financial advisor. We immediately think investments. And the same thing happens when somebody says, oh, I'm a wealth manager. We immediately think investment consulting. Now, here's the key difference. A financial advisor that does investing consulting, that's typically where they stop. All right. They may go into one or two other verticals, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but they typically will take a look at your financial situation, look at your portfolios, your retirement plans, and see if it makes sense. And that's generally where they stop. And that's fine, but it's like it's doing it very piecemeal. It's just one vertical of the entire financial world. And that's the key difference. A wealth manager will also look at investing consulting, but it's not a one vertical, okay? A true wealth manager is gonna look at your entire financial life. They're gonna look at your personal life, your professional life, what you're looking to achieve, what your key concerns are, and then they're gonna build out a team. And let me show you what the key areas a wealth manager looks at. So yes, they look at investment consulting, but here's the key. It may not be the first thing they look at. When you meet with a financial advisor, the first thing they're going to look at, let me see your portfolio. And then they're going to say, well, my allocation is better than this guy's allocation. And that's their perspective. But the reality is, if, they were, if their allocation was so great, most likely they'd be running a multi-billion dollar hedge fund and it would be challenging to even invest with them. So let's just say that financial advisors and wealth managers, from an investment allocation standpoint, if they're good, they most likely can manage or get the right fund managers to handle your assets in a, in a, in a uh, prudent way. Okay, now that's where financial advisors stop. Now, if we go back to this, where do wealth managers kick in? So the next is wealth enhancement. Now, wealth enhancement, this is all about boosting your cash flow by debt restructuring and tax mitigation or tax elimination. Now, the reason why this is so important is that, yes, you can have a financial advisor that's great at managing money. Maybe not hedge fund level, like superstar hedge fund, but you know they do a very competent job. You're not going to get seriously wealthy just by having a good allocation. Sure, you'll maintain your, uh, your purchasing power. You'll incrementally grow your wealth. All of those are extremely important so you don't outlive your money in retirement. But to really move the needle, we're looking at how can we boost that cash flow. So we want to look at your overall liabilities. This could be your mortgages, home equity loans, student loans if you're carrying any of those, if you run a business, the debts around your business. And many, many times you can restructure those. Like I'll give you an example. I went to business school and I went to NYU. I went to Stern, which is a very costly business school. And when I came out of business school, I was burdened with 163000 in student loan debt, which was a lot, plus interest. And as, a, as I'm a wealth manager, I looked at it and I was having on the, the government um, interest rates, I was being charged between 6 and 7%, which... I said, well, all right, you know, obviously I can service that, but how can I actually make my financial situation better? So I looked at every possible 
debt restructuring solution for student loans, and I was able to restructure my entire package from between five, excuse me, it was, the range was between like on the low end of five to seven. There was different tranches of student loans that made up the 163. I was able to package everything into one loan at 4.17, which is a significant difference. And I shortened the time that it would take to actually pay back the loan. I wound up saving over $50,000 of interest I would have paid if I stuck with the, the original loan. That's needle moving on just a small component. And that's what I did. And that's just one area. Most people, they have, you have mortgages that could be refinanced if you have business loans, um, credit cards, all of these types of things need to be looked at. And when you do that, you either restructure and you bring those rates down, which ultimately boost your cash flow. And when you boost your cash flow, you have more money to invest. You have more money for quality of life. All good things. The next thing we look at in wealth enhancement is tax mitigation, right? Tax mitigation is a major component. So we want to look at things not just in your investment portfolio to mitigate your taxes, but we want to look at other things going on in your world. So a key way to do this is working really closely with tax attorneys and CPAs that are really top tier and being able to project out based on what you're doing. And to see, are there any things you should be considering? Are there any potential solutions, whether it be traditional things like IRAs and 401ks or more esoteric strategies, which we can get into another time. And the idea is based on your situation, because this is not cookie cutter. Your tax situation is going to be different than your neighbors and your parents or, or your siblings or what have you, is the idea is based on your numbers, what are all the available solutions that are available to you, and uh, I said available twice, um, that are available to you, and then think through those and say, all right, which is the strategy that will help me bring my taxes down the most? When you pay the least amount of taxes legally, by the way, um, you again boost your cash flow. So if you restructure your debt and you're able to mitigate or in some cases eliminate your taxes, um, not always, but in some cases you can do that, um, you have more capital, more capital to invest, more capital to improve your quality of life, to do things with your, your families, your loved ones, or to hire more people for your team or whatever it is that you want to do. And this is a key thing that a wealth manager is going to be looking at in conjunction with your assets and liabilities, what the traditional uh, financial advisor is going to be doing. Okay, so next we're looking at another component that a wealth manager is looking at, which is legacy planning. Now, legacy planning is a major, major thing. This is really simple. This is about taking care of your heirs or your loved ones. And so, yes, a lot of times I'll meet with a client and I'll say, well, what have you done for your children if they want to do something for their children or their loved ones? And they say, oh, yeah, I have a will. And I say, great. OK, when 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 did you do it? And many times I hear that it was like 20 years ago where they had a lot less money. In some cases, they didn't even have children and the laws have changed also. So now we get to points where, all right. We need to obviously update that and you need to have all the key things in there. And many times we'll see, well, I have three children. Like I have three children, I have little children, but um, we'll say, I just want to give a third, a third and a third. And then a typical, like if this was just an estate planner, that's just like, okay, third and third and third without digging in a little bit more to find out what's going on. Typically what we find is there's differences amongst the children. In one case, I remember that one child was going to be the succession to the business. Another child had a spending problem and the third child had special needs. And now the client said, well, I just want to do a third, a third, a third. It's a little bit more complicated than that. So we were able to come up with strategies that protected the assets from overspending from one of their children. We gave a fair amount, not an equitable, a fair amount to the, his son who is going to be succeeding in the business or taking over the business at some point. Um, and then the special needs child. Special needs child needs a whole different set of documents to protect the assets so they're taken care of if something should happen to this person. So legacy planning is truly important. And many times you're looking at um, all different components that intertwine. A lot of legacy plannings have tax 
tax mitigation strategies and protection planning. So they somewhat overlap with one another, which is why a wealth manager is going to look at everything holistically. Okay, the next we're looking at charitable giving. Again, we're talking about overlapping. A lot of times when you're doing the legacy planning, charitable giving comes in. Or when you're doing tax mitigation, charitable, like many, many charitable strategies have tax mitigation components to it. So I'll give you an example. You can have, let's just say, a retirement account, an IRA, which let's say you have a lot of money in the IRA and you're young and you want to convert that to a Roth IRA. Now, why would you do that? Well, if you convert into a Roth IRA, the money will still grow tax deferred, but the key difference would be in the future when you have to take a distribution, right? The Roth IRA is not a taxable event, but the traditional IRA would be. So here's the issue. If you convert, you're triggered with a taxable event now. Okay, that means you're paying, like if you had, let's just say $100,000 that you're converting, it would be like having an extra $100,000 of ordinary income that would, you'd be taxed on. So if you were charitably inclined, there are strategies that if you put money into some type of charitable strategy, you get a very nice tax deduction. And basically, you can kill two birds with one stone. You can convert your, your traditional IRA to your Roth and you can make a charitable contribution which washes away the tax, but more importantly, is going to make an even bigger impact to the charitable causes that you're passionate about. Again, a lot of these things are overlayered. It's not just one vertical, and that's a key difference between a financial advisor and a wealth manager. Looking at all of these verticals, we're looking at all of these pieces and how do they work together in a coordinated way. Okay, the next, let me pull this up. We talk about wealth or asset protection. Now, you may hear me speak a lot about building a virtual wall or like a virtual moat around your wealth. Now, basically, we want to make sure when we're doing an overall plan that no matter what happens in your world, no matter who shows up, whether it's a lawsuit or a creditor or an ex-spouse or um, an ex-spouse of a, of a child, that your wealth is well protected. And we see this all the time where people have young children that begin driving and they get into an accident. And all of a sudden, who gets sued? The parents. If you don't have the correct protection around your wealth, money could be up for grabs. So we want to make sure that no matter what happens now or in the future, not to sound morbid, this is going back to the estate and legacy planning, is that we have that wall around your assets. And I want you to think about this. Let's say... You inherit assets. Great. Uh, not, I mean, somebody obviously passed away, but let's just say part of that plan is you inherited, um, let's say, a million dollars. So now you have a million dollars in your account. You buy a house, whatever you do with it. You invest it. It's all good. Then you get married. And let's just say the marriage doesn't work out. All of a sudden, there could be a potential claim on those dollars. Now, I'm sure your parents' intent, if that's who you inherited the money from, was not to have a future spouse have a claim at those assets. It would be for your well-being. So part of protection planning, it's not just buying insurance policies. In many, many cases, it could work with the estate plan to put money into or put assets into some type of trust vehicle that, again, builds a wall around potential creditors. It makes it very tough for them to have access to no matter who shows up in the picture. So wealth protection and, 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 um, and asset protection is key. You can do all of these other components right. Let me pull this up. You can do your investments correct. You can, you can mitigate your taxes. You can restructure your debt. You can have your wills and all of those things set up. You could be giving to charity. And one lawsuit happens and you don't have the right protection plan in place, it could potentially blow everything up. And here's the key, and I'm going to bring up the last thing, which is the team. Okay? Most folks go about their financial world piecemeal. I always say it's like people tackle their finances like they're building a house with three general contractors, four plumbers, five electricians, two pool people, five architects, and basically, it's a mishmash. And the idea is that all of these components need to work together. 
right? You need one general contractor, you need one architect, you need one plumber, one electrician, and you need top people to do this to make sure it all works together. So when the house is built, it's beautiful and there's no cracks in the roof. Now, all you have to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you to take a look at your situation now and say, are you dealing with a financial advisor who's really just looking at the investment piece of your life, or are you working with a wealth manager, which is looking at everything together and building a team and bringing in a team of people that specialize in these areas. Just like if you were gonna put a pool in for your house, you don't want just some random pool person, you want somebody that's great. If you're gonna you know, have an architect, you don't want a so-so architect, you want a great architect because this is gonna be your dream home. So same type of thing, you don't want a so-so CPA, you want a great CPA. You don't want a so-so investment manager, you want a great investment manager, so on and so forth. So the wealth manager is gonna build out this team. Now, what I want you to do in my next video, which you're gonna see is I'm gonna talk to you about how do you build a team and how do you find what I call an elite wealth manager. So I hope this message has served you. If you have any questions, you wanna go any deeper, feel free to reach out to me. I'm gonna put up my info right here and you can email me, you can call me, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have to help you evaluate what you're currently doing or thinking about doing to see if it's gonna deliver the results that you want in, in the most cost-effective way and that your assets are well protected. So again, I look forward to seeing you out there. Again, any questions, feel free to reach out and stay tuned for my next video next week, which is going to really nail down on how do you build out a pure wealth management team to help you look at everything at the elite level. Make it a great day.